Dear viewers, Drishti IAS welcomes you to the new series of Simplified. Today's topic of discussion is security technology and important institutions. Under this topic, the dimensions we are going to cover are security technology, cryptocurrency and associated organizations and conferences. So let's begin with security technology. Security technologies are often considered nice to have when building out a security infrastructure. These technologies are used by organizations with more sophisticated security infrastructures. First is Comprehensive Integrated Border Management System that is CIBMS. The CIBMS is a robust and integrated system that is capable of addressing the gaps in the present system of border security by seamlessly integrating human resources, weapons and high-tech surveillance equipment. CIBMS has been implemented since 2016. CIBMS has three components which are using a number of different devices for surveillance, an efficient and dedicated communication network and data storage for a composite picture. Sensors like thermal imager, unattended ground sensor that is UGS, fiber optical sensors, radar, sonar, satellite imagery are used in CIBMS. Next is drone technology sector. Drone is a layman terminology for unmanned aircraft that is UA. There are three subsets of unmanned aircraft, remotely piloted aircraft, autonomous aircraft and model aircraft. Remotely piloted aircraft consists of remote pilot station or stations, the required command and control links and any other components as specified in the type design. Application of drone technology include defense. Drone system can be used as a symmetric weapon against terrorist attacks. The unmanned aircraft systems or drones can be integrated into the national airspace system. Agriculture. In the agriculture sector, micronutrients can be spread with the help of drones. It can also be used for performing surveys for identifying the challenges faced by the farmers. Next is commercial purposes. Commercial opportunities are also there for drone technology. The railways are using drones for track monitoring and telecom companies are using drones for monitoring the tower. Other purposes. Drones are also significant for the law enforcement agencies the fire and emergency services, wherever human intervention is not safe and the healthcare services. Now moving on to draft drone rules 2021. Each drone has been specified to have a unique identification number with the transmission of their location, altitude, speed, etc. Any drone missing a unique ID number with the other details will be a rogue drone. Every flight of the drone will be monitored in the Digital Sky platform, so when any remote pilot tries to fly a drone, its fly path will automatically be registered in the platform. Digital Sky platform is an initiative by MOCA to provide a secure and a scalable platform that supports drone technology frameworks such as NPNT, that is no permission, no takeoff, designed to enable flight permission digitally and manage unmanned aircraft operations and traffic efficiently. There will be minimum human interface on the Digital Sky platform and most permissions will be self-generated. The Digital Sky platform will have an interactive airspace map dividing the country into green, yellow and red zones. While the yellow zone has been reduced from 45 km to 12 km from nearby airport perimeter. No flight permission is required up to 400 feet in green zones and up to 200 feet in the area between 8 and 12 km from the airport perimeter. Now let's discuss about cryptocurrency. 
A cryptocurrency is a virtual currency used for financial transactions. Cryptocurrency is a digitized asset spread through multiple computers in a shared network. The decentralized nature of this network shields them from any control from government regulatory bodies. The term cryptocurrency in itself is derived from the encryption techniques used to secure the network. It uses blockchain technology for various transactions. A blockchain is a database that stores encrypted blocks of data, then chains them together to form a chronological single source of truth for the data. Digital assets are distributed instead of copied or transferred, creating an immutable record of an asset. The asset is decentralized, allowing full real-time access and transparency to the public. A transparent ledger of changes preserves integrity of the document, which creates trust in the asset. Blockchain's inherent security measures and public ledger make it a prime technology for almost every single sector. Cryptocurrency has the following advantages. Fund transfer between two parties will be easy without the need of third party like credit or debit cards or banks. It is a cheaper alternative compared to other online transactions. Payments are safe and secured and offer an unprecedented level of anonymity. Modern cryptocurrency systems come with a user wallet and account address which is accessible only by a public key and a pirate key. The private key is only no to the owner of the wallet. Fund transfers are completed with minimal processing fees. Some of the real-world applications of technology related to cryptocurrency are People can vote for the deserving leader while being anonymous to their identity. A huge fund is distributed to the leaders of the states, but because of corrupt minds, the money vanishes and remains in pieces. Cryptocurrency will definitely help the country to get rid of it. Now let's discuss about associated organizations and conferences. First is CERT-IN. CERT-IN or CERT-IN was established in 2004 as a functional organization of the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. It is the nodal agency which deals with cybersecurity threats like hacking and phishing. The Information Technology Amendment Act 2008 designated CERT in to serve as the national agency to perform the following functions in the area of cybersecurity collection, analysis, and dissemination of information on cyber incidents, forecast and alerts of cybersecurity incidents. Emergency measures for handling cyber security incidents. Coordination of cyber incident response activities. Issue guidelines, advisories, vulnerability notes, and white papers relating to information. Security practices, procedures, prevention, response, and reporting of cyber incidents. And such other functions relating to cyber security as may be prescribed. Next is National Informatics Center. National Informatics Center, that is NIC, provides network backbone and e-governance support to the central government, state governments, and UT administrations. NIC has been closely associated with the government in different aspects of governance, besides establishing a nationwide state-of-the-art information and communication technology, that is ICT infrastructure. It has also built a large number of digital solutions to support the government at various levels, making the last mile delivery of government services to the citizens a reality. It is under the aegis of the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, and it was established in 1976 and is located in New Delhi. Next is 14C, that is IWCC. It was established in 2018 to combat cybercrime in India in a comprehensive and coordinated manner. It functions under the Ministry of Home Affairs. It has seven components National Cyber Crime Threat Analytics Unit, National Cyber Crime Reporting Portal, National Cyber Crime Training Center, Cyber Crime Ecosystem Management Unit, 
National Cyber Crime Research and Innovation Center, National Cyber Crime Forensic Laboratory Ecosystem and Platform for Joint Cyber Crime Investigation Team. This state of the art center is located in New Delhi. Functions are assisting in centralizing cyber security investigations, prioritize the development of response tools and bring together private companies to contain the menace. Objectives are to act as a nodal point in the fight against cyber crime. Identify the research problems or needs of LEAs and take up R&D activities in developing new technologies and forensic tools in collaboration with academia or research institutes within India and abroad. To prevent misuse of cyberspace for furthering the cause of extremist and terrorist groups. Suggest amendments if required in cyber laws to keep pace with fast changing technologies and international cooperation and to coordinate all activities related to implementation of mutual legal assistance treaties that is MLAT with other countries related to cyber crimes in consultation with the concerned nodal authority in MHA. Next is Cyber Surakshit Bharat Yojana. It was launched in 2018 by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology in association with the National E-Governance Division that is NEGD and industry players. It includes awareness programs on cybersecurity, workshops on best practices, and enablement of the officials with cybersecurity health toolkits. Next is Cyber Swachhata Kendra, that is Botnet Cleaning and Malware Analysis Center. It provides for the detection of malicious programs and free tools to remove such programs. It is a part of the Government of India's Digital India Initiative under the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology that is METI, to create a secure cyberspace by detecting botnet infections in India and to notify, enable cleaning and securing systems of end users so as to prevent further infections. The Cyber Swachhata Kendra or Botnet Cleaning and Malware Analysis Center is set up in accordance with the objectives of the National Cyber Security Policy, which envisages creating a secure cyber ecosystem in the country. This center operates in close coordination and collaboration with internet service providers and product or antivirus companies. This center is being operated by the Indian Computer Emergency Response Team that is CERT in under provisions of Section 70B of the Information Technology Act 2000. So that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.